As a DFIR consultant, when responding to incidents, there comes a time where a client would not have an EDR or a SIM or even logs readily available. This is more common than you might think and without this, properly scoping out the incident becomes extremely difficult. Now, there are tools such as Velociraptor that I would typically deploy. However, I wanted to introduce to you today a new tool called Lima Charlie. This tool is relatively new in the space, meaning that not many people have heard of it. And I want you to get a head start in being aware of Lima Charlie. And who knows, you might be the one that recommends this tool to your organization. So what is Lima Charlie? On their site, they are a SecOps cloud platform that offers a unified platform where you can build customized solutions effortlessly. With open APIs, centralized telemetry, and automated detection and response. If you have played around with Velociraptor, you might ask, what is the difference between the two? And one of the main differences that I see for Lima Charlie is the capability of ingesting telemetry from many different sources. Now, Velociraptor mainly acts as a DFIR tool, whereas Lima Charlie is a whatever you want tool, if that kind of makes sense. If you want to only collect telemetry, sure. If you want to perform detection and response, sure. It is super easy and simple to use. The team over at Lima Charlie also integrated Velociraptor into their platform, which is a bonus. Now, you might ask, when it comes to collecting telemetry, why don't I just use a SIM or an EDR? And the answer to that is not everyone can afford those solutions. Whereas Lima Charlie, you can pay for what you use with no long-term contracts. And yes, even if you do have an EDR or SIM, you can feed those into Lima Charlie as well if you want. Last cool thing about Lima Charlie before we jump into a demo is that I want you to picture yourself as an incident responder. One of your IR retainer clients calls you and said that they received an email from the government indicating that one of their assets is communicating to a known C2 server, command and control server. Fun times. Let's just say they have about 150 assets and they do not have an EDR or a SIM. This could take days to implement an EDR to all 150 assets and could be relatively costly as well. With Lima Charlie, there is an option to have a sleeper agent. You can install these before an incident happens on these assets and the cost would be relatively low as these agents are essentially sleeping. <laughs> this provides you with the capability of activating some or all of these agents when the client calls you about a compromise. This should provide you with a ton of telemetry within minutes, quickly identifying evil without having to wait days to deploy an EDR, which is extremely beneficial. Now, enough of me talking, let's jump straight into a demo. All right, to begin, let's head over to their site at limacharlie.io and then create an account with them. To do that, we can click on this hamburger icon and then click on sign up. And from there, you can sign up using the following options. Once you verify your account, you'll be presented with these options. Honestly, you can put whatever you want. You can just go ahead and fill it out. And then you'll get a nice overview of what Lima Charlie is. So beginning with sensors, these essentially just push data into Lima Charlie via a JSON format. And then you can send commands to clients. Next are organizations. This allows you to separate your sensors to different organizations. So for example, if you're managing multiple companies, if you think about an MSSP, a managed security service provider, utilizing organizations can allow you to be a little bit more organized. Next are outputs. This is where you want to forward your data. So you can use Lima Charlie or you can forward your data to a storage location that you own. For example, an S3 bucket. And lastly, you have add-ons. You can expand the capabilities of Lima Charlie by installing add-ons. So at the bottom, I'll scroll down and then I'll just select create organization. Lima Charlie provides the first two sensors for free to test out its functionalities. And the name of your organization should be unique. I'll type in my DFIR as my organization name. And then for the data residency region, basically select where you're located. For me, it's Canada. And now you have the option to have some demo data, which is great if you just want to see what Lima Charlie is all about. And you can enable or disable this by toggling this option here. For the template, because I have the demo data enabled, I will not be able to select any templates. However, if we go and disable the demo configuration, 
we can now select a template to use. And let's just say, for example, I want to select incident response. We can see what kind of options are immediately enabled and available for you. Now, of course, you can always enable this by yourself. These templates are just there to make things a lot easier and quicker. I'll go ahead and select demo configuration and enable that again, and we'll create organization. Now you might see an error pop up such as fail to create new installation key. Don't worry. It does take some time to set everything up. You might even get a error saying that there's missing permissions, but again, it does take a bit to set up. All we need to do is just wait a couple minutes, go grab some coffee, drink some water, and eventually refresh the page and you should be good. And this is the missing permission error that I was talking about earlier. So again, just wait a couple minutes and then refresh the page. All right, so it's been about one or two minutes. I'm just gonna click on refresh. And now you should see this introduction page asking you to install your first sensor, which we will, but before we do that, let's enable our demo tenant by clicking on the toggle. So this right here, the enable, and immediately we do see a cloud adapter right here, LC demo dash sensor. Now let's start from the left-hand side. There's a lot of options here. Under sensors, go ahead and select sensor list. And then we can see that we have two sensors that are available to us that was created from the demo config. Let's click into IT-01. We can see the information about the sensor and on the left, you can see a section for detections, live feed, and timeline. If we click under detections, now you may or may not see any detections. However, this is where any activity that matches a certain criteria in the detection and response rules, AKA DNR rules, and yes, you will have the ability to customize and or create your own rule, which is a huge win. For example, say that you're investigating a compromise and that particular malware does not exist in the wild and had been created specifically to target your organization. Well, you can create a DNR rule to detect the characteristics of that malware and then see if any other endpoints or assets have been compromised. This can help us with identifying the scope of the incident. Next is live feeds. So we'll go ahead and click on that. These are live events that are refreshed automatically. And personally, I wouldn't really use this unless I'm troubleshooting something. We'll head over to timeline. This view I absolutely love because when I'm investigating, we should always think about a timeline and have a timeline in place. With this view, it provides us with real time events. Now, if we were to compare this to the live view that I just went over, the timeline does not refresh automatically. So if you want to fetch new events, you will need to click on fetch latest events at the bottom. Using the timeline view, we can also filter for certain event types or via text. Let's just say, for example, if we are interested in only DNS events, we can filter for DNS requests. And just like that, the view automatically filters it for you. Now let's say google.com was evil. <laughs> so. We can filter for google.com and look at that. Pretty neat, right? Let's head over to detections again. The reason why I'm going back to detections is because sometimes some events do meet a criteria and this is where we can find it. Now, if we don't find any detections, that's okay. We'll just generate our own alert that does meet that criteria because I do want to show you what it looks like. While we wait for that, let's head back over into our organization by clicking on back, and then let's head over to dashboards. This will show you operational information along with any tasks that were ran on your sensors. Next are automations, and these will be your DNR rules, detection and response rules, and other options that you can configure if you like. So if we scroll down, taking a look at the rules, we have quite a bit. We have 1900 rules. And if you wanted to create your own, all you got to do is just click on new rule and then simply create one from scratch. Or you can use an existing rule to use as a template. I'm going to click back to my organization. Lima Charlie offers Yara scanning as well. Once we click on Yara service, and this is where you can configure Yara. For those that don't know what Yara is, it essentially scans for malware by looking for certain characteristics of a piece of malware. We have the ability to add Yara rules and have them scan automatically onto our sensors. 
If we were to go back to our example scenario where you identified a piece of malware that targets your organization, you or someone on your team can also create your rules to scan all of your sensors looking for that particular malware. Next, let's click on outputs. This section will allow you to configure other cloud tools that your organization might be using. We can click on add output. For example, if you wanted to send detections generated by Lima Charlie to Slack, this is where you would do it. You're not limited to only detections. There are events, deployments, audit logs, artifacts, tailored. There's just a bunch of options for you to choose from. The last thing I wanna show you before we install our own sensor is their add-ons. On the top right corner, you see add-on. We can go ahead and click on that. This is essentially Lima Charlie's marketplace and it will extend its capabilities. You can integrate Virus Total, Atomic Red Team, Sigma, and many more. Now, some do have a cost associated with it. For example, Soteria rules, you can see 50 cents a sensor per month. And to enable an add-on, all you need to do is just click on, let's just say Virus Total, and you will see a subscribe button on the right, this big blue button here. And all you need to do to enable it is click on subscribe and also subscribe to my channel as well, or this add-on won't be enabled. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but that it is that easy. Now, of course, you will need to set up the add-on to make it work, and the instructions are provided here. Now it says subscribe to this VT API add-on, and then set the virus total API key in the integrations view within your organization. You might be scratching your head, where is the integrations view within your organization? Don't worry, I got you. We can head back over to our organization at the top and then click on my DFRR or whatever your organization name is. Let's scroll all the way down until we see organization settings and then you see an integrations tab. We'll click on that. This is where you enter in your API key and then update. So I went ahead and clicked on detections after waiting a couple minutes and we do see three detections, which is pretty cool. This is what I want to show you. So we can click on any of them and then immediately on the right hand side, you will get a detailed JSON view of the events. Now you can pivot by clicking on view event timeline and this will jump into the timeline view for you and it will highlight the event of interest. Now you can see the events that happened prior and after the detection, which is pretty cool because now you can follow the chain of events. If we were to go back into our detections and then click on any of them again, there is another option called mark false positive. Let's go ahead and click on that. This will open up the rule that detected this and here you can modify the rule to your liking. And it also has a testing feature at the bottom right here, test detection. So we go ahead and click on that. We can see that it says, hey, it, it matches. Six operations were evaluated with the following results. And it's all green, meaning good to go. I'm just gonna add a random one to this outlook.exe and then I'll test it again. This time it shouldn't work. Yeah, there you go, no match. Only four operations were evaluated for the following results. So if I were to save this rule, it wouldn't match my detection. This is great because now you can modify, test it, modify, test it, just to make everything better in the tool itself. I absolutely loved this feature. Now that that's done, let's go and create our own sensor. We'll head back over to our organization and then click on sensors, head over to installation keys. From here, we will go ahead and remove the demo sensor by simply deleting it. They'll say, hey, are you sure you want to delete this key? Yes. On the top right corner, you see a big blue button called create installation key. Go ahead and select that. And as for the description, you can put whatever you want. I'm just gonna say test. And the tags, if you want to enter a tag, but I'm just going to leave it as blank and click on create. The reason why we create an installation key is because without this key, you won't be able to enroll your machine over to Lima Charlie. You can kind of think of this as an activation key. So if we were to scroll down under sensor downloads, we want to select the operating system of your target machine. In my case, I'm using Windows 64 bit. So I'll click on Windows 64 bit and it'll download automatically. In order to install Lima Charlie's agent, we got to open up PowerShell with administrative privileges. And then I'll change the directory to where my downloads is located. In my case, it is under my username as my DFIR. Go under downloads and then I'll type in dir. 
And we do see a strange zip file, which I will demo later. <laughs> and we do see this hcp underscore win file. Now, all we need to do is type in hcp because this is Lima Charlie's agent. I'll hit tab because I'm lazy to type in the entire thing. Type in dash I, and then let's head back over to Lima Charlie's portal and then scroll all the way up. We want to copy the sensor key. So I'll go ahead and copy that, head back over to our PowerShell, and I will go ahead and paste in that key and then hit enter. And that is it. Service installed success, agent installed successfully. Let's head back over to the portal, go under our sensors list. And right here, we do see our desktop. Now let's go ahead and click into our machine, the desktop-ci. Now you might notice additional options that weren't there from the demo sensors. For example, you see auto runs, drivers, file system, and many more. Let's look into auto runs. So I'll click on auto runs and this view provides us a list of auto runs on this system, which is incredibly useful if we're looking for any persistence. Clicking on console allows us to run commands on the target machine. So for example, if I wanted to see all of the network connections, I can type in netstat and hit enter. And then we can see the network connections. Another cool option is a file system. We can navigate the file system and download files that are suspicious to perform additional analysis on it. If you recall, I did have a sketchy file under my downloads. So if I was investigating this computer and we've identified that malware was hosted under the downloads folder, we can go over to the users, my DFIR, and then this suspicious looking zip file, we can go ahead and download that by simply clicking on download file. And then it will go out and fetch it and download it onto your machine. This is incredibly useful if you want to perform malware analysis to find additional IOCs, indicators of compromise. Next, scrolling down on the left-hand side, I wanted to show you processes. Here we can see all of the active processes and information about them, including the command line. So if we were to scroll over just a bit, we do see the command line here, which can help us identify evil very quickly. What's really cool about this view is that if we were to highlight over any of the processes, we could view the modules, kill process, suspend the process, resume the process, download their memory strings, view memory map, and view the network connections. I'll go ahead and select view modules. And within the same window, another window will just show up with a list of modules associated with this process, along with its file hash as well. So if you notice some kind of DLL sideloading activity happening, we can immediately just pivot from here and then analyze it using virus total. Now this method will search it using the file hash. Now let's imagine that this host was indeed compromised and we confirmed this by the malware that was found under the downloads directory. We can go ahead and start quarantining this host by clicking on overview. So if we were to scroll up, we can click on overview and then select isolate from network. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to isolate the sensor desktop dash CI? I want to say yes. This will cut off all connections except to Lima Charlie's console, allowing you to perform forensics if required. Even if the host reboots, it will still be quarantined. Now to remove the quarantine, you just need to click on rejoin the network and that's it. So let me demonstrate that. So I'm on my Lima Charlie portal and you can see that my computer desktop dash CI has a red lock indicating that it is isolated. I'll go and select my desktop and then I'll select rejoin network. Are you sure you want the sensor desktop dash CI to rejoin the network? Yes. And it's rejoining to the network. And now my computer had been removed from quarantine and now I can continue to watch my favorite YouTuber, my DFIR. <laughs> This tool is super cool and I recommend you get a head start and learn more about it. I can see this becoming more popular in the future when organizations begin to realize how expensive security products are becoming because Lima Charlie is extremely affordable. Seriously, do go and check them out. For those that stay till the end, I hope you learned a lot about this tool and started to think about all the possibilities that Lima Charlie can provide. I mean, imagine the automation that you can create using its API. And that is it for the video. I hope you found that informative and I wanna thank you for watching.
Remember to stay curious and do things differently.